Alrighty, welcome back. Today we are going to talk about utilizing materials and smart materials and non-destructive workflows to get going. Um, non-destructive workflows is what we talked about last time, which is fill layers with masks so you can edit your, the things you've done in the past. All right, the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about materials. If you come down to your library and you go ahead and hit materials, you'll see we get a drop down. And ideally we wanna use one of these materials to put on the head of this grenade, okay? So the first thing that I like to do is I like to create groups or folders for each component of this grenade. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a folder. I'm gonna go ahead and call it grenade head. I'm gonna go ahead and right click. I'm gonna add a black mask. I'm going to select the little watch icon, color picker, material ID, boom. And now I've selected the color ID, all right? So that's what I like to do for each of mine. That way, any material or anything that I create goes into this folder, which is nice and organized, and it affects this based on how I have it stacked in the layer stack. Okay, um, but a cool feature, just so everyone knows, is if you come in here and you want to drop a material on here, you go into your library, you go into your materials, come in here, type what you want. I want to apply metal. You have an ability to adjust the tags on here as well as add colors and you can easily access those colors. So if something that you're using a lot, um, feel free to look at the Marmoset tool bag tutorial. It's really cool. Um, so one thing that's really cool is if I were to say, double click this so it doesn't have the cloud icon and then click it, you can see it brings up my map my ID map, so I can drop it on the ID map. You can see the material is created in our layers with a mask that is utilizing this, which is really cool. And if you all remember, ID maps were baked out initially. It's the high poly model with each, each different mesh having a different color material assigned to it in whatever your hub program is. Mine, I use Maya. So that's really, really cool. So you can do that if you want, just drag stuff in, create it and do masks like that. Me personally, I do not. I like to use the folder method and only mask out when I have to. That way it's easier, it's more organized, I don't have to create a million masks. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click this. Instead of dragging it in here, I'm gonna drag it into my layers. You can drop it down or you can drop it into the actual layer. So what I've done is I've dropped it into the layer. So I'm if, you, if I were to open this up, this is the mask. You can see I have the mask where I could paint in and then my color selection. So that's feeding into the mask. If I click next to it in the folder, you'll see the actual item, all right, the material. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in here and you can see you have all that maps active. You have your projection method. For me, I'm gonna switch it to triplanar, which will help cover up seams if there were any seams based on how you UV'd it. Yeah, tiling, uh, that's your X and uh, uh, your X and Y tiling uh, within the UV or your U and V space. Uh, so you, these are linked right now. So I'm just gonna hit click two and you can see it's gonna basically multiply the texture. You can unlink it and stretch it if you want. You can rotate it if you want. Okay, you can do all these sorts of things. You can come down into the material properties which are basically the input maps for these active maps. So I'm gonna come in here and you can see we have a, you can see we have a map in here for the texture. It's probably a seamless texture. That way you can adjust it. I'm gonna go ahead and click, the, it's like a tinter. I'm gonna lighten it up a little bit. I don't want it that dark. I don't want it that contrasty, so I can make it real contrasty. Non. I'm gonna bring it in just a little bit, okay? I don't want too much of it. You can see we have a roughness map. We can adjust that if we want. I'm not gonna adjust it too much. I want it a little shiny. That's a little too much for my taste. There we go. Give us a little, little breakup is all I want. We'll adjust it more later. Normal map, bump map, ambient occlusion. You can unclick them. You can also turn them off, off up here. So now we've done that. We've added this. It's in our nice little, our nice little folder, which is organized. Uh, a cool thing is, if you want to go down to your smart materials, which are basically not just a material that has a color and a roughness map, but it's a lot of procedurals, which we'll get in in the next video of how to create procedurals and adjust them. If you wanted to do that, let's go here. Let's go paint. All right, you can see I already have one downloaded. But what you can do here is, let's say I want to drag it in and just drop it on here. Since the smart material is already created in a folder, it will basically already create a folder with a mask over it. So you can basically rename this to what you want and then drop other things in it. Okay, so it's super cool. So I'm gonna go ahead and then in this, you can actually edit a lot of these different things like scratches, you can see the scratches. Um, 
you can see the hue and saturation, you, all these different things. This is what makes it smart, is you can adjust the procedural aspects of it and adjust how this thing looks. I think this, is a, this obviously is not what we want, so I'm gonna delete it. I'm just gonna go standard. Oh, there we go, and create a fill. I'm going to go ahead and choose what I want, which is bam, bam, bam. I'm gonna go ahead and choose the color that I want. Give us a nice kind of tone down. There we go, a little darker, there we go. Uh, let's go to roughness. Let's make you a little less rough. I'm gonna add just a little bit of metalness in it because it is painted over metal. So I want a little bit of that to come through. And that's our base. The next thing we wanna do, or I would do, is create a folder. I'm gonna call this grenade base. Okay, and what I'm going to do here, add a black mask, just like we have. I'm gonna go up into my ID picker, color ID, material ID, add new, click. It's gonna do that. I'm gonna grab this fill layer and I'm gonna drag it into, oh, this happened last time. All right, let's go ahead and drag this. All right, let's go ahead and duplicate that, boom. Add a fill layer. Let's drag it. Hmm. Okay. Let's. Do we have a selection going? Oh. I don't think so. This happened last time. I'm not really sure what is causing this. Okay. Let's go ahead and click in this. Might be a little bug that won't allow us to. Oh, interesting. There we go, boom. So now I've dropped it in there. So I'm not really sure what was causing me not to be able to drop it into the folder. So remember when you drop a fill layer, make sure it doesn't go into the mask goes into the folder for some reason it wasn't allowing me to select it so I turned off the eye icon and it allowed me to drag it in real interesting um, but let's continue all right let's go in let's make these color adjustments again since we had some issues it's always good to troubleshoot a little bit I think uh, let's go right there let's get that roughness a little less let's bring that metallic in just a bit all right and now that it's in here you can see that it's only affecting this area all right, so we were able to drag a material in. We are able to drag a smart material in and see what that would happen. We now know that when you drag a material or smart material in, the ID map automatically shows, which is convenient. And we also talked about creating folders and amasking those folders and dropping everything in those folders, which keeps things nice and organized. So at this moment, we're gonna end this video. The next video, we'll talk about adding additional layers and talk about using procedurals. See you then.